In this 3D Printing 101, I'm going to go through my tips on designing 3D printable models that don't need support material. This is more of a 3D printing masterclass, but it's been a while since I've done anything like this, so let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and welcome back to another 3D Printing 101 video. I have a whole playlist of videos designed to get you into 3D printing easily and smoothly and this is one that I haven't added to for some time. So it feels really good to get this video out. Now, I've been designing models for 3D printing for a very long time and FDM 3D printers have a very unique set of parameters that you need to consider when designing for them because if you design things that overhang or need to fight against gravity, you'll need to use support material. But sometimes with careful consideration, you can negate the need for support material, which is great when you want to design things like this. So in this video, I'm going to show you my design tips and tricks for getting just that little extra bit out of your FDM 3D printer and not having to tick support material. But I do need to stress that if you have a design that does need support material, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just best to try to avoid it if at all possible. So what determines needing support material in an FDM 3D print? Well, it all comes to overhangs. An FDM 3D printer fights gravity as it builds up its layers, layer by layer by layer. If you build a layer over nothing, with nothing supporting it, well, gravity takes hold and sends that down and you're going to end up with a print that either looks terrible or fails altogether. So all of these tips revolve around two fundamental aspects of FDM 3D printing. Number one, 45 degree overhangs are pretty much the sweet spot for getting good quality 3D prints and anything more than that might start to affect your print quality. So 45 degrees from vertical. And finally, Bridging is possible in FDM 3D printing. Bridging is where you run filament across a gap between two surfaces. It doesn't mean doing a cantilever like that, where it's just off into the distance. That's not going to work, but bridging between two points is entirely possible on an FDM 3D printer. And you can go very long distances, depending on how good your cooling is, if you, are, if you have a fine-tuned machine in terms of bridging. So with those two fundamental aspects in mind, let's jump into our first example. So here I have a random part designed in Fusion 360 that I intend to 3D print. And if you look at it from different angles, for example, top view, left view, front view, there's no real obvious way to print this without support material because of this tab here. If you wanted to print it this way, it needs support there. This way, it's not really going to be supported by anything because there's a sharp edge there. And uh, this way, if this is where the bed was, you need support material there. So at the design stage is the perfect example to apply our first rule. Try to make every overhang where possible have a 45 degree angle. Anything more than that, then you will start to run into trouble. Again, not considering the bridging aspect, which we'll go into in a minute. So for this part here, we can make this properly 3D printable without support material if we give it a 45 degree overhang. So to do that in Fusion, depending on how you model it, I'm just going to do a, a chamfer. So here, modify chamfer, drop it in there and pull it out like that. And bam, we're good to go. That is a 45 degree angle. And now this part will print with no support material needed. So when considering designing a 3D printing model, if you have details that stick out at any angle, try to make them have 45 degrees or less. So a good example is my puzzle cube. Now I designed this to be as easily 3D printable as possible. And that's why I designed it to print on these faces here. So when you look at the actual pieces, I designed these to print on that face there. And that means at any point in time, 45 degrees is the maximum amount of overhang that I will have. And I carefully tweak the inner portions to ensure that they weren't over 45 degrees, which means that these models print with no support material. Now, it does sometimes want to generate support material for the actual indentation of the logo, but that's so small that realistically you don't really need to consider it when designing uh, for supportless 3D prints. It's so small that you can get away with not using supports unless you scale this model up 
quite a lot. My next tip is to give yourself a good solid first layer. There's nothing worse than having a bed full of support material before it even starts forming the model because that's highly likely to get knocked over and fail. So an example here, this is a fantastic model that I really like printing and the teeth do generally need supports. Yes, absolutely. And so do the spikes, but see the bottom here. It's just the sculpt has this sort of organic shape and that's not conducive to good 3D printing. So to make this model easier to print, what I would do is grab a plain cut in Mesh Mixer and just cut it off. Maybe just here, for example, and remesh the fill. So there it will actually give it a really good solid first layer. And even though it will need support material for some of these details, it will stick really well and won't get knocked over. I will link to this model in the description. It's on Thingiverse and it's a fantastic sculpt of a dinosaur head. That's my next tip. Make sure you give yourself a good solid first layer. Alrighty, now let's talk about clever print orientation. Now this is huge. A lot of people struggle with the idea of printing things at weird orientations to get a better, better result, but that's just part of getting your head around 3D printing as, as a technology. It has its own unique constraints. This is a uh, Asher diamond, Asher cut diamond model that I drew in Fusion uh, for another project. But as you can see, if I, if I give you the front view here, side view, uh, there's no real obvious orientation to print this. It has some crazy steep overhangs if I printed it upside down like that and I can't print it on the point because well that's not going to stick to anything. So how would you 3D print this diamond without using support materials? Well believe it or not it's actually possible and I'll show you how by firing up Mesh Mixer and using a really cool little analysis tool built into it. So Mesh Mixer actually has a tool built into it to help you determine the best printing orientation to minimize overhangs. It's really handy. So under analysis, we have orientation. So the orientation menu gives us an overhang angle we can set and you can choose to determine where you want it in terms of what your 3D printer is capable of. So let's say 30 degrees is something I'm comfortable with and we can update the model to see what it gives us. As you can see here, the best orientation would be like this, except keeping in mind our original rule, we want a good solid first layer. So the option here from a front view would be to perhaps to cut a plain cut here to make this easier to print on the surface. But what I'm going to actually use is this tool to inform my decision to print on one of these faces on the edge here. So using the results we got from Mesh Mixer, I'm going to try the, to print this model on one of those edges, which does seem really weird and counterintuitive. However, if we change it around, so I'm gonna, this is in Idea Maker by the way, so I can go to Model and I can lay flat on one of those triangles, that looks good, apply. So even though it looks really strange, if we give it a good brim, like a couple of layers to help really stick that thin side down, you can see that it actually makes the overhangs a lot less than if we printed it with this face down. So I'm going to start and just try it out. Let's slice it. Yep, why not? And preview. And this is in vase mode, by the way, but you can see it would actually print. I mean, this is this would be challenging still, the, this overhang here but it would actually print okay, which is really surprising. Okay, but what if you can't overcome some of the overhangs of a model? What if it's just too difficult, no orientation makes sense? Well then, there is no shame in splitting your model into separate pieces. There's nothing wrong with that. I was planning to do it on this model anyway. There is nothing wrong with splitting a model and in Mesh Mixer, I've got a whole video here about how to use the plane cut tool but essentially we can go to edit, plain cut, and then I can choose where I want to cut my model. Let's just let's say I'll, I'll cut it here, whatever. And I want to keep both sides, except, and then separate shells. And now I have two halves of the model, as you can see here, one half there, and one half here. And we can use that nice big flat area we now have to print the model without any real difficulties. 
All right, so I'm not sure who came up with this idea. It wasn't me, I definitely stole it from somewhere. But this next tip involves bridging. So what I have here is a nice little nest of parts for a new project I'm working on. And this is a perfect opportunity to use a bridge. So you can see this part here. It has this area here that could be used with support material, but I don't want to, I want to have a bridge. Except that would normally be fine, but I have holes here for a motor mount. What I've done is I've given those holes a fill that's only one layer thick, so it's about 0.25 millimeter layers thick um, of material. And what I will demonstrate is when I go to, to slice this model, slice with no support material on, this will allow those holes to actually succeed. So what would normally happen if I had holes going all the way through the model is we would get good bridging up to that point where it would start to try to fill in holes over midair and it would fail. However, because we have a microscopic one layer or so thick layer, of material, if I scroll back in the timeline or the layers and show you that first build where it just starts to build that bridge, it does a perfect bridge and that material, which is very thin, gives us support for those holes which begin to form next. Now, when this model is finished, it gives us a very thin layer that we just bust through with our part and it gives us a very clean part. So again, I did not come up with this idea I can't exactly remember where I saw it. I've been using it for a few years and it works really well for letting you print models without any support material, but they have very big, large bridging overhangs. Now, remember I said bridging works fine, but if this was cantilevered, it wouldn't work. You would need that 45 degree or you would have to use support material. Okay, and this is the last tip and one not many people really consider when trying to max out the overhangs they can get away with on their FDM 3D printer. And that is layer height and extrusion width. So I did some experiments last year, early last year, um, on the maximum overhangs I could get at a given layer height. And I found something really interesting. The finer your layer height, the further you can push your overhang, the more overhang you can actually have. When you think about it, it makes sense. You have layers upon layers, and if they're closer together each time, they're overstepping each other more than if they're further spaced apart. However, if you also want to push this even further, there is one more hack. I'm gonna, gonna, give, gonna call it a hack because it really is to pushing how far you can get away with, with overhangs, and that is to increase your extrusion width. And this one is really interesting. So we're actually combining the both, both of those uh, advantages of a lo lower layer height and an increased extrusion width, which means the line you're extruding is wider. Now, if you've got a 0.4 millimeter nozzle default, it's usually 0.48, you can increase this. So here I've got a 0.5 millimeter nozzle on the N2 plus, but if I go into the settings under the extrusion width, I can actually increase this from 0.6, which again is quite standard, to one. And I can actually go to the layer height and again make that 0.1. So this is gonna give us the maximum chance we have for getting a ridiculous overhang. Save and close, slice. Yes, let's see how that goes. And in our preview window, you can see that it actually gets way up, way up. And this would actually probably succeed all the way up to, in my experiments at least, 70 degree overhangs. They might not be pretty, they probably won't be pretty, because the extrusion width's thicker. But as you can see here, we can get away with a much, much steeper overhang. And that is going to do it for this video on my design tips for getting a 3D print to succeed without needing supports. Combine all of these tips together and you can design models like this. This is my Easter egg torture test. And this was printed with no supports and intentionally designed so when you print it correctly on a good printer, the parts move like this. And similarly, my lattice cube torture test, which I did quite a while ago, um, this is designed to print with no supports with a steep overhang. It really pushes 
the limits of FDM, but takes advantage of FDM in that you don't need support material if your machine can handle the overhangs. If you found this video useful, guys, I would love to have you subscribe and keep in mind, this is going to be added to the 101 playlist here on Maker's Muse. There is hundreds of videos designed to help you get up and running in the wonderful world of 3D printing. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.